you will watch this video. You will like and subscribe. We will be identifying the Clockwork Soul Sorcerer. Time comes for everyone at some point, but there are those who are more in tune with it than others. Those who have been touched by the plane of Machinus and infused with its power. These people are able to see the world as a vast, glorious, ticking machine and use that to their benefit. The Clockwork Soul Sorcerer is a new sorcerer's origin included in the Tasha's Cauldron of Everything book, and I think it is really, really great. I feel like at my tables, I have this problem where if anything has order or law or clockwork strapped onto the name, that people just toss it out immediately without even looking at it, which I think is a real problem because there are a lot of really neat features in this origin, and it has a lot of cool stuff going on. That being said, I do have a greater concern with the design philosophies of the Sorceress Origins in this book, but I will be discussing those at the end of the video, as well as my fixes for that. This origin starts off at first level with clockwork magic. You add spells to your spells known that are sorcerer spells for you and are not counted against your spells known. These spells cannot be replaced when you gain a level in this class. However, every time you level up, you can switch out one of the spells that you already know with another one as long as it is from the Abjuration or Transmutation schools of magic and is on the Sorcerer, Wizard, or Warlock spell list. I'll go ahead and keep the spells known that are learned through this origin up next to me while I talk about them. Now, looking at the spell list, there are some good options, but you will notice that some are a little bit more on the timid side. Things like Alarm or Aid or Summon Construct are neat and helpful, yes, but maybe not the crazy viable options that the sorcerer really needs to be effective. This is where the tag at the end of this ability saying you can switch out these spells is key because you can switch these out for any spell that has the abjuration or transmutation tab as long as it's on one of those three spell lists. And that is really powerful. There are some really great abjuration and transmutation spells. I mean, just looking at first level, you could get Armor of Agathis or Expeditious Retreat or Shield or Mage Armor. As we start gaining levels, you can look at things like Alter Self or Haste. There are really powerful options here that you can pick up. A lot of these spells as well are already must picks for the Sorcerer, so it's really nice that those spells can be put in these slots so that you have your normal spells known to take spells that you actually want to use. The Sorcerer has a known problem of not having enough spells known, so I'm really glad that this origin takes a step in the right direction to fix that. Before this, other origins, like those included in Xanathar's, only gave you one spell. This is giving you a whole extra list of options, which really goes up to sure one of the sorcerer's multiple weaknesses. And this isn't all you're getting either. Also at first level, you're gaining Restore Balance. When a creature within 60 feet of you would roll with advantage or disadvantage, you can instead use your reaction to cause them to roll normally. You can do this in an amount of times equal to your proficiency bonus before you have to wait for a long rest to do so again. Once again, this can feel like kind of a meager ability, but the power there is real. It is easy to see where situations could come up where you could use this ability. If you use flanking rules, one of the most common variant rules in the game, then you can cancel out an enemy's advantage for flanking. 
If a friend is knocked prone, you could cancel the advantage they would gain from that. If one of your allies is attacking in their second range increment, or if they're fighting in darkness, any disadvantage they would gain on their attack rolls is null. I mean, this ability could single-handedly make invisibility null and void in combat. Same with blur, and the effect that you can use this on anybody is great. If your rogue is in a situation where they're rolling with disadvantage and wouldn't get sneak attack, you can just say that they roll normally and that'll mean that they get sneak attack as well. Normally, I go back and forth about the design choice they've made with this book to make everything based on proficiency bonus, but I actually think that's a good amount of times for this ability, because at first level, you're probably only going to see this coming up once or twice in a combat, but having the option to do this more and more as you level up is only going to create even more creativity. And since advantage and disadvantage are things that are going to be with you for the whole game, you are never going to be in a situation where this ability wouldn't come up anymore. Already, this origin is incredibly powerful, and I think much more powerful than other sorcerous origins at this level. And we're only talking about first. As I mentioned, I am going to actually have a problem with this, but I will save my views on that for the end of the video. Starting at sixth level, you gain Bastion of Law. As an action, you can spend one to five sorcery points to create a magical ward around yourself and one creature within 30 feet of you. This ward is represented as a pool of d8s, and when you or the creature would take damage, you can expend this pool of d8s to reduce that damage by that amount. Once you use those dice, they are expended, but otherwise the ward lasts until you take a long rest or use this feature again. Once again, this origin is shoring up some of the problems with the sorcerer, but this does it in a flavorful and powerful way. Sorcerers often suffer from having a d6 hit dice, meaning they are very, very squishy. They don't have armor proficiencies, so they can go down really quickly if you're not careful. This allows you to make sure that not only you are going to stay in the fight, but if there is another squishy party member, you can help them out as well. One of the other things that Wizards of the Coast really liked in this book was temporary hit points, but this goes above that ability and instead gives you a pool on top of that, meaning that if you have a Clockwork Soul Sorcerer and something like a Twilight Cleric, you are going to go from a super squishy caster to someone just chalked full of hit points who is not going to be able to take a lot of damage. I could see this ability being really good on a sorcerer paladin multi-class because you're going to be using most of your spell slots to do smites anyway, so you don't need the sorcerer points for that. So you can chalk them all into giving yourself a warding barrier around yourself. This will be on top of your armor proficiencies gained from Paladin, the healing that you have access to through that, it will make you a really beefy character. Something else to note is that this doesn't take your reaction. So if you have a spell like Absorb Elements or some other resistance to damage, you can reduce that damage past the resistance amount. Now, in these cases, you will reduce the damage before you resist it, but this is still a really effective way to mitigate a lot of damage you're taking. The next ability they get is Trance of Order. At 14th level, as a bonus action, you can enter a trance for one minute. When you do so, attack rolls against you can't have advantage, and furthermore, whenever you would make an attack roll, an ability check, or a saving throw, any roll of 9 or lower is treated as a 10. Once you use this ability, you can't do so again until you finish a long rest, or until you expend 
five sorcery points to do so. I see now that we're 14th level, we're not worried about looking meager. This ability is crazy. This is stupid powerful. If you're smart about when you activate this ability, you can make sure that you can't roll less than a 10 on your initiative. This can add to your concentration checks. Any saving throw you have, that is crazy. The fact that you can do this on attack rolls at 14th level means that you can't roll less than an unnatural 20 on your attack rolls for things like Chaos Bolt? That is insane! And then on top of that, you don't need to worry about flanking, you don't need to worry about being knocked prone or caught off guard because a creature cannot roll with advantage against you. Honestly, this ability is also good outside of combat. If you're in a social game and you are parlaying with an important diplomat, you can activate this ability as you are talking to somebody when you make a diplomacy or deception check and you can make sure you can't roll less than an unnatural 20 on those social skills. If you pick up a feat like Prodigy, all of a sudden that number becomes 25 five that you can't roll less than. I can see why they only made this ability a minute because it is crazy powerful. And unfortunately, that does mean that in longer form combats, you may run into a situation where this ability is going to run out, but you are still going to get so much mileage out of this along the way that I really don't think it's a problem. Furthermore, if you're really hurting to get it back, you can just spend five sorcery points to do so. Now, this does tap into a problem the sorcerer has rather than fix it, which is the fact that sorcerer doesn't have a lot of sorcery points to give. But at 14th level, you're finally in a situation where you can kind of spend sorcery points and feel okay about it. So I think seeing this ability twice in a long rest is not out of the picture. Ugh, I just can't get over how cool this ability is. This brings us to our final ability, Clockwork Cavalcade. At 18th level, as an action, you can summon spirits of order to expunge disorder around you. The spirits appear in a 30-foot cube centered on you. When you activate the ability, the spirits can restore up to 100 hit points divided as you choose among creatures of your choice instantly. Any damaged objects entirely within the cube are repaired instantly, and any 6th level spell or lower on any creatures or objects of your choice ends instantly. Once you use this action, you can't do so again until you finish a long rest or expend seven sorcery points to do so. I think this ability is interesting. I have a hard time actually wagering how I feel about it. Honestly, for me, the flavor of this ability is a little weird for a class that is so focused on pulling power from yourself and your origin and your bloodline and such a personal connection to your magic. To have your capstone archetype ability be you summoning other dudes to do your work for you feels a little weird, but I can't ignore how good the abilities are. This is a really great 11th hour ability. The fighter is down, the wizard is all out of spell slots, the rogue is cursed, everything's destroyed, you are just about to go down, and so you activate this ability, you get the fighter back up, maybe with a hundred more hit points if you want, you end the curses on the rogue, and all of a sudden, for maybe once in your sorcerer's history, you're feeling just a little cooler than the wizard. That being said, this is 18th level, so abilities of this caliber are to be expected, and so it's a little weird looking at this ability and going, yeah, that's about right. I find that little tagline about 
damaged objects within the cube being repaired instantly. Very interesting. And I wonder the effectiveness in this where you're in a tier of play where you're maybe owning airships or boats. And if those things are being destroyed, I suppose if they're small enough, then you can repair them instantly. But otherwise, personally, I'm having trouble thinking of situations where that ability would necessarily come up. That being said, you guys are pretty awesome at letting me know when I'm missing something on those abilities. So please fill me in in the comments below. I would love to hear how that ability is awesome. So all in all, I think the Clockwork Sorcerer is an amazing addition to the Sorcerer class. It is so flippin' powerful like it is really really crazy the caliber of archetypes that we have in tasha's and that is actually my problem with the archetypes in tasha's these archetypes are so much more powerful than the other archetypes given to the sorcerer it would have been one thing if they just added all those extra spells known but they didn't stop there the rest of the abilities given to these archetypes, as we've seen in the Clockwork Soul, don't pull any punches. They are still incredibly powerful abilities, and in a lot of cases, they are still abilities that I would be taking over other sorceress origins, even if they didn't get those other spells known. So since they have those extra spells known, it almost feels weird if I would take some of the other origins, knowing that I'm missing out on so much. I remember having this problem when the Hexblade first came out for the Warlock, where it just didn't make sense anymore to take anything else because I'm actively choosing to miss out on so much. And unfortunately for the Sorcerer, I think nine times out of 10, between the Clockwork Soul and Aberrant Mind, you're going to be in a situation where that trade-off just isn't worth it, and you would rather be one of these origins. Where I think Wizards of the Coast missed the perfect opportunity was to create origin spells for all of their archetypes. I mean, Tasha's was the perfect place to put this in. They added variant class features. I can't believe that that didn't make it into the book or didn't cross anybody's mind. So I decided to go through all of the official sorceress origins that don't have spells granted already, and I've decided to give them origin spells in the same way as was done here. You can find a link to the PDF with all of those in the description down below. The reason I did this is I feel like this is the only way we're going to see a wild magic sorcerer or a draconic bloodline sorcerer ever again after these archetypes drop. Honestly, I think that Sorcerer right now is where the Ranger was in Xanathar's. We saw a lot of very powerful archetypes for the Ranger in Xanathar's, which tried to fix some of its key problems with giving it options for dealing damage outside of Hunter's Mark. I think the Sorcerer's Origins are in a similar boat right now where they're trying to use archetypes to fix problems with their core class. I would not be surprised at all if in the next Everything book we run into a situation where all of a sudden the Sorcerer is given class feature variants, much like the Ranger, that are just better, that are just fixes to the class. I've got to be honest, I'm worried for the Sorcerer and I'm worried for that to happen. The Sorcerer was the first class I ever played, so it has a really sweet spot in my heart, and it was really sad when I got to 5th edition, and I realized they weren't all that powerful. So, I want to do everything I can to look out for my boys. With all of that out of the way, though, I guess I should rank this guy. Um, so, for Clockwork Soul, I think I have to give it a 4.5 cauldrons out of 5. I will be doing an Aberrant Mind Sorcerer Identify a little later in this series, and spoiler alert, that one has the 5 out of 5 cauldrons from me. I think it's just a little better than this one, but this is still so much better, again, than any other origin that I can think of. And so for that, it gets a top tier rating from me. How do you feel about the Clockwork Sorcerer? Let me know in the comments down below. 
If you like this video, consider liking it. And if you like the content we do here, please consider subscribing. This video is part of a series that we do here called Identify. We are currently going through all of the Tasha's Cauldron of Everything archetypes. We're giving our opinions on them, we're telling you about them, and so far they've been a pretty good time. It feels like just yesterday that we hit 50 subscribers, now we're at 100. That is incredible, and it's so crazy how quick that turnaround was. So thank you so much to the old guard, the skeleton horde, who have stuck around with us this far, and hello to all of the new people who are finding our channel for the first time. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you on your next short rest.